Today on NBA Monday, I am going to talk about why rankings matter. I'm also going to talk about why they don't matter. And I'm going to talk about what you should do with them to make them useful to you personally on your NBA journey. Hello, welcome back to NBA Monday. I'm Angela Guido, the founder of Career Protocol, and I am here to help you achieve your NBA dreams. NBA rankings. It's a perennial topic on this channel. Everyone is obsessed with what other people think about the things that they think they should be thinking. Because my personal opinion is that the rankings sort of really, in reality, don't matter. If you go out to the ranking agencies, and we'll link to some of them in the description down below here, you'll find that they both disagree in a very big way on the specific numbers that each of the top programs should occupy in their, you know, rubric this year, whatever their rubric was this year. And their rubric is constantly changing and evolving and is sometimes a little bit transparent, sometimes totally opaque. But you'll also find that they have a general consensus about what are the schools that are the top, the best ones? What are the schools that are like also really great, but not at the very top? And then uh, what are the schools that just aren't really ranking at all? They're, they're not on the list. So if the rankings matter at all, it's in this general consensus of identifying which programs over time have the strongest general reputation with the population at large. That's what the rankings give us, is a way to understand that, yes, on average, Harvard, Stanford, Wharton tend to be the strongest and most uh, uh, programs with the best reputations. And after that, you've got the rest of the M7. You've got Booth, Kellogg, Columbia, and MIT. And in general, those seven schools, most people kind of agree are right at the top. And then you've got a bunch of schools that come in in the top 10, the top 15, the top 20, that are again, pretty stable over time. You've got Tuck, you've got Haas, you've got um, Michigan. You've got Cornell, you've got the University of Texas, you've got NYU, you've got, you know, I could go on and on. But if you're on your MBA journey, you've probably come across all of these schools at some point. And I'm not even talking about schools in Europe or schools in Asia. But again, in those geographies as well, there is some consensus about, yeah, these schools are the best. Now, when you drill down into the specifics of these schools, you find that they're vastly different from each other in pedagogy, in employment opportunities and placement, in the community feel and in the way students engage on campus and interact with each other. Huge differences, even among the top three. Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton are very, very different from each other, even though we all kind of agree that in the US, those are the top three schools. And so if you're gonna use the rankings, you really wanna take the whole thing with a giant mountain of salt and really just use it at first to understand, okay, where does everyone think the best schools are? Where does everyone think the next level and the next level and the next level? You wanna use it for broad strokes, generalities to identify a set of schools that you feel is reputable and will dramatically increase your professional profile if you are associated with that program. That's the biggest way and kind of the only way that I personally think the rankings matter. Where they don't matter, is in dictating whether they actually are a better school for you or not. This is because you have a unique career path. You have a unique set of goals, a unique set of qualifications, unique ambitions, and a unique personality that's not gonna fit in in just any old culture. You have to keep in mind that rankings were invented by magazines. Yes, print magazines way back in the day when we used to read magazines in paper, they were invented to sell magazines. If a, if a magazine 
produced a rankings issue. It didn't matter what the ranking was of, you know, it was in their area of expertise. It was always the best selling issue of the year because people want to know what other people think about things and they want numbers to hold on to. It's just a sort of a, a weakness of human nature. We're so eager for the approval of others. But the purpose of rankings is not to help you. It's not to help you achieve your dreams or to make good decisions about business school. It's to sell subscriptions to whatever the publishing agency is. That's why rankings exist. They're not there for you. So the first step, this is how to use the rankings. I'm now moving into section three. How you want to use the rankings is to use it first to identify a set of schools that you feel is aspirational for you, that you're excited about based on their general reputation. You then want to do some much more in-depth research around which schools are going to give you what you personally want from MBA programs. And then, you want to apply to a portfolio of schools that is going to ensure that you're giving yourself a chance at the very top for your statistics and that you've got one or more schools where you are a very competitive candidate so that you're going to get into at least one school by the time your journey is done, provided you do an amazing job of all of your applications. And I say it this way because the MBA is really just a tool. A lot of people apply to business school for a lot of different reasons, some of which place the MBA as an end in and of itself. I don't think this is the right way to look at it. The MBA is a useful tool to help you achieve the impact and the leadership and the dreams that you have for your own career. And many schools, would likely give you what you need to achieve those dreams. This is why you want to apply to a set of schools, not just the top and not just the lower end of the rankings, but a mix of schools in the middle so that you can ensure that you're getting in somewhere while also giving yourself a chance at the top. But beyond those processes, the rankings really, really, really don't matter. And there are so many reasons for this, but the biggest one I'll give you is that if you think about how the world really works, you're going to get your first post MBA job through the campus recruiting network. So you do need to identify the programs that give you access to the kinds of jobs that you think you want post MBA in the geography that you want to work in post MBA. This is one of the hugest benefits of the MBA program is that it like, kind of helps you jump into whatever the next job is that's best for you. So you want to really be judicious about which schools create that opportunity for you versus which schools maybe make it possible, but don't assist quite as much. And where might it even be impossible to get the jobs that you want uh, post MBA, given where the school is located or given where students have gone in the past. So you do need to think about that. But once you get your first job, where do you think your second job, where do you think your next job is actually going to come from? You're not going to go back to campus. You're not going to recruit on campus again. You're going to use your professional network, which is comprised of your MBA classmates, the alumni of the school that you went to, and potentially even more importantly, everyone you've been working with in your post MBA job. Most people move from one opportunity to the next, based on the people that are in their immediate social professional circle. And this gets even truer the more senior you get. What that means is you don't need to care what the average Joe on the street thinks of your MBA program because that person isn't going to be hiring you. That person isn't going to be creating your next job opportunity. In my vast experience of career coaching, being an MBA and recruiting myself, the brand of my MBA barely mattered at all. What employers really cared about was where I made change happen, where I produced results and who specifically was vouching for me. That has nothing to do with the brand of your MBA. I know it's sexy. It has cachet to have a top brand on your resume. And I'm not discouraging you from using the rankings to find the top brands 
and give them a try. But in the end, that doesn't really matter. What the population at large thinks about your MBA program doesn't matter. What really matters is that it gets you to where you want to go in your first step and then that you build your network to get to your next step. So check out the rankings, take them with a mountain of salt, have fun calibrating your profile and choosing your schools, but don't let the brand name of your MBA or the ranking of your MBA program be the only determining factor of whether or not you apply for a school or not. You got to find the schools that are really best for you because that's where you're going to be happiest. And that's going to be the best launch pad for whatever comes next in your amazing career. That's what I'm here for. I am here for your success and I will be right here next Monday on MBA Monday. So I'll see you then and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Bye. Well, hmm. I didn't think through this one so carefully.